Hi, I'm Ridge Shoemaker, and today is day 23 of my doing 100 days of YouTube videos and focusing on my writing. So, yay for day 23. Um, very grateful for today. Um, also, grateful that I did my writing today before I went to work, which I don't normally do. So, yay. It's kind of nice to have that out of the way. But mostly I did it because I had to go to my writing group tonight. Well, I didn't have to, but I have my writing group tonight. So I wanted to do my writing before my writing group. And then I went to work after my writing group. And I just didn't want to be up all night because I'm going to lunch with a friend tomorrow. <laughs> so I'm just kind of um, trying to do better at taking care of myself and trying to do better at um, keeping a schedule. Not that I'm <laughs> the best at any of that. Um, but <clears throat> doing a little bit better. And it was kind of nice to come home tonight and realize the only thing is I have to do after I got something to eat was to make my YouTube video and write in my journal and I get to go to bed. So yay, that makes me very happy because I'm really ready to go to bed. Um, so I did a little bit of working on my my books today. Um, my writing for recognizing God's hand in my life, I just kind of wrote my little, um, oh, crap, I was texting my friend B this morning, this afternoon, um, about my books and um, was asking her if I should put something at the end of the chapter, my analogies or my interpretation or whatever, my realizations as an adult versus, you know, what happened to me as a kid, the story. So kind of the story and then what I learned from it, I guess. Um, and she said that would be a good idea. I had a word for it and I can't remember what it is. I'm so sorry. <laughs> My brain is just not functioning. But um, basically, so it's the, it's the story, kind of what happened to me, the events that occurred in my life. And then um, as an adult, looking back, like how I see God's hand in my life. So it's kind of my um, interpretation, my explanation. Um, kind of to, to stick with my theme of I'm writing the book to show God's hand in my life and how that's blessed me throughout my life in spite of all of the things that have happened to me. So I just kind of went back and added that to my chapter two. And then I um, did some revisions on um, Lenoya and the Teachers of Powers. Um, and I had a lot of ideas today. It was really funny because I was like, last night I decided that I was like, I don't know when I'm going to finish my books and I'm going to stop giving myself deadlines to do stuff because I keep disappointing myself and everything always takes longer than I think that it will. But I'm still going to work on my books. So, of course, this morning when I'm trying to get ready <laughs> to go somewhere, um, everything keeps popping into my head like ideas for my story. Do this, do this, do this, do this. And so I have all these ideas for Illinois, but they're not for where I'm at in the revision process. They're for a little bit further into the book. So um, I did write them down as far as notes go. So I remember when I get to that part of the book as far as revisions go, but I didn't feel like skipping ahead to that part. I was like, oh, I'm not really sure I want to skip ahead to that part. But I did get through chapter four today. So yay for chapter four. Made some notes on that. Um, was it just chapter four or did I get to chapter five too? Um, I think it was just chapter four. I think I just finished chapter four. I made some um, some changes and things like that. So very excited about my um, my writing. I'm like, hey, I'm getting somewhere. I'm making progress. And I sent my revisions of the four chapters to my friend B. I need to send it to my friend um, that's doing my book covers that moved away. I just haven't sent her my revisions for the first four chapters because she didn't read past that. But she didn't like my character. And I was like, um, I made a bunch of clarifications that she might like that would help her a little bit. But I don't think she's going to like my character anymore because I'm not changing my character. <laughs> so I was like, um, sorry, you're disappointed. But yeah, not going to change. <laughs> so... Um, I might, I'm still debating back and forth on the whole idea of a prologue for the book. Um, I might do it. Um, maybe when I finish going through the revisions, I might decide to go back and do it just because it might tie everything together a little bit better. Um, I have the idea. I just haven't convinced myself that I want to write another chapter basically at the front of the book for a prologue. Um, still debating on that one. Um, and then I went to, like I said, I went to my writing group tonight, which I love my writing group. It's amazing because we all get to sit around and we get to discuss what we're working on as far as our writing goes and gets to share. We get to ask for help. We get to ask, ask for advice. So I actually get to give advice to other people, even though I haven't published my books. I can just 
give my little input and thoughts and say, oh, this sounds really good, or oh, um, this maybe doesn't quite make sense, or you know, what about this? So it's really awesome. But I also love my writing group because it's completely anonymous. So we don't, um, I don't know that it's secret who's in the group so much as we don't share what other people are working on as far as their writing goes because we respect each other as writers. So we don't tell other people what we're working on in our group. So it's just, um, it's just us. So I can't share with you what anybody else in my group is working on, just what I'm working on. So that makes me very, it's, it makes it safe and it's a nice safe place to share my writing and to get feedback and things like that. So it was good. And I, I brought my laptop because I'm the secretary for the group and I have to take notes as far as like attendance and stuff like that goes. But I also have my books on my laptop. So um, our president for the next couple of months, um, we switch positions every year, apparently. Um, it's my first year doing a whole year of my writing group. So um, still just learning how this goes. And of course, I just started last year. They made me secretary. And they're like, hey, can you just be secretary one more year in a row? And I'm like, sure, why not? It means I have to go to the meetings. It's good. I like going to the meetings. So um, anyway, we kind of rotated. We picked who are rotating positions for for starting in January. But um, I was saying that because my current president, I'm just trying to uh, <laughs> find a way to comment who she is without saying who she is kind of a thing. My fun little not telling you all who all of my friends are. <laughs> trying to maintain some anonymity for other people in the off chance I actually become famous. I don't want them you know, getting bombarded because they know me or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't want to tell other people's stories or like gossip or do any of those other things. But um, anyway, she assumed the my current president and the chapter group that I go to assumed that because I brought my laptop, it meant I had something to share. <laughs> and I was like, um, I don't really want to share anything tonight. I don't have anything to share. I just I've been working on my revisions for my one book and I don't really have anything specific to share. I don't want to keep reading the same chapter over and over again. I'm good. So that's where my brain went. I'm good. I'm totally good. And so I listened to other people, listen to their shares, listen to what they were doing, gave some input on some of it, kind of excited for what they're working on. And then I got to my turn to share. <laughs> I was like, I don't really have anything. But I was like, okay, I guess I could share. Um, what I've done so far in recognizing God's hand in my life. And I opened it up and I couldn't do it. <laughs> I just, I couldn't do it. Um, I started reading like the first paragraph and I just started choking up. I'm like, I'm totally going to cry just thinking about all of this stuff. And so I had to give it to somebody else. I let someone else in the group read it. So they actually read the first two chapters. And basically after the first chapter, um, they told me, <laughs> well, um, it was my mentor. She was there um, tonight, which is awesome because um, she's moved away. So it was nice that she was in town so she could come to the meeting tonight. So I haven't seen her in a while. So I was like, yay, nice to see her. Anyway, so <laughs> she she read, she read it for me. And she said that my first chapter should actually be titled, should be a preface. So I should just say preface or something instead of like the chapter because it's not really a chapter. It's just I guess a preface because it... It basically explains why I'm writing the book. So I guess it's a preface. So I really have a preface and a chapter one instead of two chapters in my book. So I'm like, that's okay, as long as I know what to call it. Um, and then she read the second chapter and um, basically she was she was amazed. She's like, this is your rough draft. And I was like, yeah, it's a rough draft. It's kind of only my second time rewriting it. The first time I just kind of put all the ideas down on paper. <laughs> just went from one to another. and. It was a, a jumbled mess, and this is my trying to go back through and organize all of my jumbled mess of thoughts into some form of a book, and she was very impressed with how um, well-written my uh, my book is at this point for just two chapters, and I mean, she did say I have some um, fragmented sentences and some missing punctuations and things like that, which is totally normal. I, I do that all the time because, as I've mentioned before, I suck at grammar <laughs> and punctuation and all of those things. I do not understand verbs and adverbs and nouns and all of that stuff. And yes, I learned them in school and verbs are action things and nouns are people, places and things. That does not help me when it comes to putting together a sentence. It just, <laughs> knowing that information means absolutely nothing to me. I'm sorry. It just <laughs> it does not um, register in my brain how to put, how that works as far as a sentence goes, because I look at it and think it's a complete sentence. I don't know what else to add to it. Um, so <laughs> I'm like, Nope, I'm good. 
So anyway, I'm not worried about that stuff because that's all stuff that can get taken care of in some kind of editing or a um, second or third revision of the book, just going back through and rereading it. And, and there, I think there are either words that she skipped or words that I didn't type up. So I just thought and just kind of was typing too fast and skipped over because I was like, that should have said this word or this word. And it was just something simple like my's or eyes or something. Or I think I deleted something to the kind of um, reword the sentence and I forgot to to move the words to the right place. So anyway, um, but she said it wasn't too bad. And um, some other people said that I was really brave for being willing to share this and for wanting to get it published. And that takes a lot of courage to do that, which I really appreciated that. And um, I think someone else just said that it was, it was really amazing and I did a really good job. So it was kind of, um, it was hard because I was tearing up. <laughs> I was just tearing up listening to someone else read my story and just the memories and everything that it triggers. And I'm grateful that other people in the group were commenting and mentioning that, um, you know, as you write, it brings up all of the emotions. And I've mentioned that in these videos before. It does. It brings up the emotions. You have to be sad when you write. You have to be happy when you're writing happy stuff. You have to be angry. You have to feel what your characters feel when you write a book for it to be that good book you have to to feel that so to, to me it's like I'm writing what is their feeling how am I tensing my body what is my body doing so I can write that and my character's doing that um but for me when it's just me telling my story it's amazing how those emotions just come up by themselves I don't have to think oh this person's angry this person's this how, how would they respond I was like oh no I'm just responding <laughs> um to the memory of how I'm feeling and so um and it's very emotional for me to to tell my story so um I just <laughs> I'm surprised I'm like I've shared it in my videos a little bit um I know I've cried a little bit in my videos because of sharing some of those things uh but I <laughs> I just wasn't able to to read it like it was there reading it and even when someone else was reading it I was still having a hard time like controlling. I was like, I'm crying. I'm like, I'm sorry. And at one point my mentor, she's reading it. She's like, now you're going to make me cry. And I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just emotional. And I told someone at my um, writing group that my grandpa passed away when I was seven. And the next chapter that I'm going to work on is called Death is Not the End. And she was like, oh, that's really good. <laughs> so I have at least a good title for my next chapter. And I have all of the stuff to put in there. And I know that when I'm done, as long as I compile all the chapters together and I just do, this is the story. And then this is kind of like my, um, my insights into that story, my, my understanding things that I've gained or learned or how, um, God has blessed me because of those situations, um, or protected me or <laughs> whatever the case may be. Um, the chapters would be flexible as, as far as movable goes, because right now I'm kind of, um, torn between, um, what comes next in my storyline um, as far as different things, because a lot of things in my life and my childhood overlap. And when I'm writing the, the story, I'm trying to separate them into to categories, I guess, to compartmentalize it so that it makes a little bit more sense to the reader so that I can be a little bit more specific and focus on this specific thing. And this is what I learned, like, you know, death is not the end. And it wouldn't just be um, my grandpa's death, it would be my other grandpa's death, my aunt's death, my um, my grandmother's both have passed away since then too. Um, not, not when I was a child, but my both of my grandfathers and my aunt and her unborn baby died when I was a child. And I had a um, someone I knew from church, kind of an acquaintance, but someone I knew of and saw on a regular basis. So basically kind of grew up in the same neighborhood um, who passed away when I was in high school. So um, a lot of, <laughs> and then of course the woman that lived down the street, I think I mentioned her too, that was kind of like a grandma to me. Um, that was my mom's boyfriend um, at the time. So, and she passed away when I was in high school as well. So um, a lot of death <laughs> that I had to deal with at a fairly young age. Um, and I am aware that my great grandpa passed away when I was like five or six, cause my mom went to his funeral and she took my baby sister with her 
um, and not the rest of us. I don't really remember what happened to me when that happened, and I don't really remember him, so I didn't really count that as feeling like a, a loss in my life. It's not something that feels like it was traumatic to me, not something that I noteworthy to write about. I'm like, that happened. <laughs> I, I mean, he was still alive. I probably met him, probably saw him a few times because I was probably living in Arizona and he lived in Arizona. It's where my grandparents were at. And because um, I was living with my grandparents. So I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure it was my grandpa's dad. I'm sure I met him, but um, I'm not, I don't remember him. So, um, and I, I remember like my great grandma Goldie, like visiting her like once and she was like, thought my, my little brother looked like her brother or like my great grandpa or something. So she kept calling him by the wrong name because <laughs> she was kind of old and have a little bit of senility there. Um, I think I don't remember her very well. I just remember talking about her and going to visit one time and, and my brother remembers a little bit more clearly because she kept calling him the wrong name um, because he looked a lot like my great grandpa, I guess. Um, anyway, I digress. I ramble. See, this is where my brain goes in all kinds of 100 different directions, which is where my story went in 100 different directions. And I can't believe my friend B is still trying to read my story that went in 100 different directions. And I told her, I said, you don't have to keep reading it because I'm going to rewrite it. I'm going to organize it. It's going to make sense. And you read the first two chapters. You're like, oh, great. It makes so much more sense now. And I'm like, yay. And then she's still going to finish it. I was like, you don't have to. Okay, you can finish it. But I I'm still going to rewrite the whole thing and reorganize it. So, um, and then, you know, obviously I would want feedback to see like what order, if I put everything in the right order, because some things don't really matter the order as long as the content stays together in the chapters. So, um, I can rearrange the order. So like, so like the next chapter I'm writing doesn't have to be the next chapter. It could be the fourth or fifth chapter or seventh chapter or, um, whatever, just depending on um, what makes it flow the best for the book. Um, I can get some feedback from people when I'm finished rewriting it. Um, but I was I was just amazed at how um, understanding and kind and gracious everyone at my writing group was and encouraging, um, telling me that I'm brave for writing my book, telling me what a good job I'm doing as a writer. And it was just, I kind of needed that reminder that I, I am a good writer, I do have a talent, uh, maybe not very good at my grammar and punctuations, but, um, and also that I do have a story to tell that might actually be uplifting and helpful to other people. And they actually like thanked me for sharing that story with them because it is a very personal story. So, um, and that's just <laughs> the beginning. That hasn't even got into the really, um, really heavy stuff. So um, it's going to be a challenge for me to, to deal with all these emotions as I write the books, but I'm grateful that I could write them. And um, I'm grateful I could go to my meeting and was able to share it. Even if I couldn't read it myself, <laughs> at least they got to hear it because someone else was able to read it. So I'm grateful for that. And I got to hear it myself so I could kind of see what made sense and what didn't. And I think for the most part, it made sense. There were just, like I said, a few words or something that either she didn't read or I didn't write. And I was like, that should have said something different. I'm going to have to fix that. <laughs> but that means I'm going to have to go back through and read it. And I'm not ready to do that until I finish going through the rest of the book. And because I don't want to keep redoing the same chapter, I will never get through the rest of the book if I do that. So I think it's better to just finish the whole thing and then go back through a second time and just kind of read it and catch the little mistakes that I can catch and then send it to someone else and be like, okay. <laughs> now it's really ready for people to read and, and to tell me what I need to do to fix it. Um, and the other thing I realized um, when I was leaving the meeting tonight is for some reason I thought some other people might be um, upset about my book. Because as I said, I can't talk about other people's books, but some of us have similar genres that we're writing in or similar type stories or things like that. Um, and so there's this crazy part of me um, old default setting part of me that feels like if I'm doing something that it's a comparison to someone else. And um, even though it's not, it's very different. Everyone has a different story to write. But I was thinking about um, an experience I had in college, probably had 
many of those throughout my life. But um, my older sister had this, we were having a party, a movie night, and I decided I wanted to make some cookies. And I don't remember what kind of cookies I made. I think I made peanut butter cookies or oatmeal cookies or something. And she made peanut butter cookies. So two totally different types of cookies. Um, but there was this guy she liked that was coming to the party and she was freaking out because I made cookies and how dare I make cookies because what if he likes my cookies more than her cookies? And I'm like, they're different kinds of cookies. It doesn't matter. I just want to make some cookies. Like can't possibly make cookies because somebody like my, else might like it better than hers. And I'm like, okay, if we were making the same type of cookie and it was a competition, you know, that's being judged, then sure. Maybe be a little irritated or whatever, but it wasn't even the same kind of cookie. And, and then um, it turns out for whatever reason, that guy chose not to even eat the cookies while we were there. So afterwards she apologized like, oh, I guess it doesn't really matter. And you're right, there are different kinds of cookies, whatever. I'm like, seriously? Because, <laughs> like, yeah. Anyway, but that's like, that's how I felt growing up, that every time I tried to do something or I was good at something, um, it hurt somebody else or it was a competition. It was turned into a competition. And as much as I love my older sister and she's not like that anymore. Um, I think she's outgrown a lot of that, learned a lot. So it's not like we're the same people we were way back in college or when we were growing up. It's just that growing up, um, being that close in age to her and, um, making, making it a competition. If she didn't make it a competition, um, our mom did. It was a comparison thing like, oh, well, she's good at this, so you should be good at it. Or, oh, no, she needs to be better at this, you know, because her self-esteem is worse than yours. Or I didn't have bad self-esteem, supposedly. I was fine. Um, <laughs> I wasn't fine, but it didn't matter how many times I said that. I was told that I was fine and I didn't need anything. And my sister did because it was more important for my sister. So um, that was what I heard my entire life, that's what I internalized. So I have this underlying fear or um, expecting that kind of uh, backlash that if I did something and it was good, that it's um, taking the place of someone else, like it's upsetting someone else. It's going to, it means that someone else is not good enough somehow. <laughs> like we can't be on even rungs with each other. And um, so it was really nice that tonight sharing something that was very personal to me, um, and realizing, thinking, expecting some kind of um, backlash. And instead I got complete support and told how brave I was and um, what an amazing story that I was sharing. And it was just kind of like, I'm putting myself out there and expecting um, and realizing that not everyone thinks that way. And then just that gentle reminder um, from God that it's everybody has a different story. And that my story will impact the people that it needs to and help the people that it needs to and other people's stories will impact the people that it needs to and help other people <laughs> that it needs to. And the same is true of the cookies. <laughs> some people will like my story, some people will like the other person's story and some people will like both and some people won't like either one. It's not a, it's not a competition. And my cookies, my books don't take away from anyone else um, and theirs don't take away from mine. It's completely, it's different. We have different writing styles, different other things. And I know I've, I think I've mentioned that before, but it was just kind of a, maybe a little bit more internalized tonight, just in my, just in my sharing and just in the support that I got. And it's just so different from the world in which I grew up in <laughs> where it was like, you know, I would write something and then my mom would be, she would have to rewrite it because my grandma wasn't right or whatever, or I would verbally tell her what I wanted to say. And then she was like, oh, okay. And then she would fill in all the little blanks and all the little details. And then it wasn't, it wasn't my story anymore. It was hers. And I would turn it in, you know, I, I loved my creative writing class. And then, um, but then I started telling the stories to my mom and then she would type it up on the computer and then she would change it she would add it she would whatever and then she would be so excited for me to get the grade back and i wouldn't be because it was my idea but it was her story it wasn't my story anymore and i know she didn't mean to do that she was trying to help me get a good grade but she was wasn't helping me learn by doing it for me for one and then i just felt like my words and my version wasn't good enough um, because she had to fix it. And I always just said, okay, I just always agreed to it because I 
speaking up never did me any good. And I didn't know what was wrong with what I said. So I was like, oh my guess that works. Okay, sure, why not, whatever. And then the grade would come back and I remember getting like a B on something and my mom looked at it, she's like, it's a B huh and she looked all disappointed and it was a b like she thought it was gonna be so much better and i was like um but it wasn't like disappointment in me that i got a b i think it was surprised to her because she thought she did a work on my story and i don't know if that's what she thought it was just the expression on her face and that was my my interpretation and i am learning and realizing that i'm very i'm very critical <laughs> I think I grew up being very critical. I was taught to be very critical, very judgmental. It was a way to take, um, to avoid facing myself and focusing on myself. And I'm also very critical of myself. But um, I just, I couldn't understand why the, the huh for the my grade, I mean, it was my grade, it was my paper, but it didn't feel like it was my story because she took my idea and she rewrote it. So for me to even be able to write a story in and of itself is, to me, is amazing. Um, it takes a lot of courage to overcome all of that for me, to be brave enough to do that. And then to share my story, my insights, my reality, and realize that maybe I don't know exactly what she was thinking or doing or why she said or did what she did. My interpretation was, and, and I actually wrote that it was my interpretation of the situation or what was being said and not, um, not that that's what she meant by it, because I'm sure that's not what she meant by it. She wasn't trying to hinder my learning or make me afraid of writing. I don't think that any of that was ever her intent. That was just my interpretation that I wasn't good enough, that I couldn't do it myself, that my words weren't in the right order. Um, and I know she was just trying to help me get a better grade and she liked typing stuff up and she could have been a really great storyteller, a really great writer. And she had all the grammatic stuff down too. So I know I got my imagination and my writing from my mother. I just, um, I just didn't get her grammatical sense and understanding of English grammar. <laughs> so, which, you know, is life. That's just something I didn't inherit somehow. So, um, and of course, then I was always afraid of it. But like I said, there was always that comparison, that back and forth. And so it was kind of nice tonight to, um, cause I was worried about that. I don't know why, just that, that um, underlying emotion, fear that people are gonna judge or be afraid or gonna be a comparison because I'm writing something similar to something else. And there wasn't any of that. And I'm so, I feel very grateful for that. I feel very blessed. And then just the nice, realization reminder that um i'm not the same person i was all those years ago my sister's not either and our interpretations of things now are very different than they were back then and that people can change i'm grateful they can change i'm grateful i can overcome things i'm grateful to have a different perspective to start internalizing things and realizing i don't have to be afraid i don't have to stand in my own way um i don't have to put on the brakes for fear that what I'm doing might prevent someone else from doing things or make someone else feel bad because I can't control someone else's feelings. And I'm not doing any of what I'm doing to get in anyone else's way or in any way step on anyone else's toes. That's not my intentions whatsoever. Um, and, and I'm not, I mean, <laughs> I'm writing several different books, different genres, all of those things. Lots of other authors do that. Lots of other books are out there. Lots of different people, lots of different opinions. I am not um, stuck with one or the other. And I'm, I'm grateful for that reminder that I don't have to stop working on my stuff. I don't have to shy away from my work for fear that it might offend somebody else because it's, it's not offending someone else. And even if it does offend someone else, um, or even if someone else doesn't like it, like my friend doesn't like my character, she likes my storyline because I've told it to her, but she doesn't like how I wrote my character. And I was like, well, then <laughs> you're just not going to like that book. Um, and that's okay. That's fine. That's, you know, it is what it is. Um, so, and, but I can still write my book and not have to worry about it. And I'm grateful for that. And I'm grateful to know that I can write this book about myself, about God's hand in my life. And it's just my testimony. It's my sharing my experiences. And they're unique from anyone else's. And although there may be some similarities, I think the similarities will bring me closer to my readers, um, closer to other people, so they know that they're not alone. 
Um, but I don't know that it's going to be out there to offend people. I mean, it might. There might be some people that don't like it, that are offended by it, that don't like my interpretation of how things went. Um, I know my baby sister has a completely different view of our mother. And um, so there may be some things that I will write about her that my sister disagrees with. And she made me very upset by it. But it's still my interpretation. It's my part of the story. And I sent a chapter that I had to my older sister and she was surprised um, at how I felt. And all she said was, I'm sorry you felt that way, but I don't have a problem with you sharing any of this um, in your book. So, um, which I was nervous that she wouldn't let me share that um, in the book and she's letting me share that. So I'm, I'm grateful that she's okay with that. But I, I didn't share, I mean, I shared some things that happened to her because it affected me, but I didn't share her story basically or her personal things. But I mean, she's a year older than me. We're very close. So a lot of things are going to overlap with me and my siblings and my story. Um, so, but I'm, I'm grateful that I can do this. I'm grateful for the courage that God is giving me to do this. I am grateful for the love and support that I'm getting and the reminders that, um, I don't have to worry about what other people think. I can just continue to go forward because it's the right thing for me to do. It's what I feel inspired to do. It's what I feel will help me. Um, and as my friend at the, the writing group tonight said, there's a lot of healing in writing. And it's true. And I know there is. Um, I was kind of thinking about that tonight. There's there's 12 steps in my 12-step program. <laughs> and the first one is you know admitting that you're powerless over whatever it is you're powerless over and that your life has become unmanageable. The second step is um, believing that a power greater than yourself can restore you to sanity. And the third step is aligning um, aligning your will with God's will, basically. Um, turning your life and your will over to a power greater than yourself. And I feel like when I did my gratitude list that I kind of ended up doing those things, recognizing how unmanageable my life was and doing those gratitude things and um, recognizing that God could restore me to sanity. And then starting this writing um, feels like I'm kind of aligning my will with God's and doing all of this. And then step four is doing a fearless and moral inventory of yourself and seriously writing, writing, um, recognizing God's hand in my life is doing a fearless and moral inventory of myself. It's my life story. And it's also seeing my interpretation of things, my perception of things and how it was distorted and how to, because of my gratitude list and because of things that I've learned growing up, that some of those things that I thought were bad were actually blessings. And some of those things I just, I survived and I learned from and I can share with other people that, you know, you can get through this and it's okay. Not fun, but it's okay. You will survive. Um, so just lots of um, blessings and things that I had in spite of what happened to me in my life that's made me the person that I am today. And then, of course, step five is sharing it with um, a trusted friend or um, with your higher power and then with a um, trusted friend or person, which kind of <laughs> I'm actually just kind of sharing it with the world, sort of, because I will be publishing that book and I will be doing sharing bits and pieces in my videos. So um that is step five. Step six is um, something to do with oh, my brain grows. It's um, uh, yeah, my brain froze. I guess I'm not to step six yet. <laughs> it's uh, something to do with defects of character, recognizing your defects of character, and. Um, Step seven is humbly asking God to remove all of your defects of character. Step eight is making a list of people that you've harmed. And then step nine is making amends wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. And step 10 is kind of a mini, um, it's kind of like a mini fourth step, but it's basically, I can't remember exactly what step 10 is, but it's basically just kind of, double checking your everyday life to see where you're at and make sure that you're still on track with, with God. <laughs> I can't remember about what it says. It's, it's been a while. Um, and step 11 is um, a meditation step. Um, it's meditating and, and basically um, praying to know God's will in your life.
Um, and then step 12 is just sharing the message. So, um, and you kind of go back and forth between all the steps and they're all things you can continue to keep doing and, and work through. But I feel like I'm working through all of them in a little bit of a deeper level as I'm going through these 100 days of things that I'm doing. And it's, it's very good for me to do. And it is very healing, but it does bring up a lot of things. And it is very, um, very emotional and very difficult sometimes to, to process all of that. And not only that, but it's scary for me to, to share it with everyone, which at this point makes me very grateful that my YouTube videos are not like monetized and I don't have like a bazillion people watching my YouTube. I know I don't think a bazillion, bazillion people watch any YouTube videos, but I don't have like a hundred thousand or a thousand or a million or whatever people watching my YouTube videos. Um, and maybe five or six years from now, if I get that many people watching my YouTube videos, hopefully I will not be as self-conscious or freaked out about it because I'll be like, um, okay, some of these I might forget that I did or wish that I hadn't done in the future because of how hard and scary or embarrassing or whatever. But I think the more um, I put my faith and trust in God and the more I build confidence in myself, the less I worry about what other people think. And I know I don't have to worry about what other people think. And tonight it was just nice to know that um, people weren't judging me. I was judging myself and they're not concerned about what I'm writing. They're actually encouraging me and they think that I'm being brave for doing what I'm doing. And it's just a reminder to me that I need to not be so critical of myself and I need to be, not be so critical of others because I don't know what they're going through. I don't know what their story or their background is. And I don't think I realized how judgmental I was but I mean I grew up around that that's what I I heard my entire life you know like that person's not wearing their clothes where's their clothes they're not dressed modestly um and or you know that you're off key you can't sing right <laughs> um I got a lot of that like it was always always a negative was pointed out and not just for me but to everybody like whoever on tv my mom would watch those Miss America pageants and she would act like she was the judge <laughs> and make all of her comments on all of those people that were coming through and she liked watching those shows and I guess judging all them people I I grew up around that so it's just kind of a, a default setting judge myself judge everybody else and I'm realizing that that's not a very nice way to do things and um and then I become more self-critical of myself and I, I fear that other people are going to like what I'm doing and I want other people's approval. And um, it's kind of that whole mesh of stuff that needs to be uprooted, old stuff that needs to be replaced with new stuff, of more compassion, more understanding for myself and for other people, knowing that I don't know what they've been taught, what they understand, and it's not my place to judge. Um, it's not my place to be critical of them and I know that I'm my own worst critic and I need to be more gentle and loving with myself so I'm just I'm learning a lot through my writing um, discovering more things about myself and not just the surface stuff but internalizing things and feeling better about myself and about who I am and recognizing more of my talents as being talented and grateful for other people pointing that out and going, okay, it's not just me. I do have some talents there, but um, also being open and humble enough to ask for help for other people and accepting it and not fearing that they're going to take my story or they're going to rewrite it. They're going to change it, that I can learn from it, that it's, um, it's a way to learn from how they're doing it instead of, because um, when I was a kid growing up, I just thought, that I wasn't good enough and my mom had to rewrite everything I did instead of like learning how to do the grammar thing. I think I just mentally blocked all of that stuff out. Um, and I don't know if I can ever remove that block. So um, it doesn't matter because I know I have friends and people that can help me with my grammar and whatever. And I can get somebody to edit my books when I'm all done doing revisions. And I'm like, okay, that's as good as I'm ever going to get it. I'm going to just let somebody else edit it and it'll be done. So I'm... I'm grateful I can do all of those things and I'm grateful that I can share all of the things that I'm learning in these videos um, through my writing and that I can still find my things to be grateful for because I like the idea of maintaining my gratitude. I think it's going to help me stay focused on the positive to maintain a better perspective of everything that I'm that's coming up that I'm dealing with and I need that. So I'm grateful that I have that as a base to fall back on 
while I'm dealing with all of the emotions that are coming up while I'm working on my writing and telling my story. So, um, and I hope that these videos are helpful and um, that you're learning something <laughs> from all of my crazy and all over weird random trails that I go off on. And um, if you like, you can hit like, you can subscribe, you can share to someone else if you think it will benefit them too. And um, that's all I have for today. So thank you. And I hope you have a great day full of gratitude.